Hitman Frank Sheeran looks back at the secrets he kept as a loyal member of the Bufalino crime family. I think it's a great, it's a great synopsis there. Uh, it doesn't mention anything about Jimmy Hoffa, which <laughs> is interesting because one of the reviewers uh, we're looking at, I'm going to show you guys here, touches on that. Um, is this film really about Sheeran and Jimmy Hoffa? Uh, and that's a good because on the surface, The Irishman is about the death of Jimmy Hoffa and who killed him, right? Because until to until this day, it's still a mystery. We don't, no one knows what happened. There's a bunch of different theories. Um, this movie itself gives gives you a very specific theory of 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 what happened, and it highlights his involvement with the mob. And I want to say I love this film. I when I first saw it on Netflix, I really really enjoyed it, and I'm so glad Criterion made the Blu-rays. I know people don't buy movies anymore. I still do. Um, and there's a ton of great bonus features there that I highly recommend. Um, the Blu-ray is really good. It's a really well done um, piece of media. But what I really liked about it was the characters. Like I knew, I think like most people, I knew about Jimmy Hoffa and I knew that he died. Um, but that was pretty much it. And that he was involved with the mob somehow. And that was about it. So... Um, well, it's good to go. Well, it's good that it goes down that route. And I'm going to talk spoilers in this. I think what I liked about it more was the setting uh, and kind of the mentality of the characters, just because it reminded me <clears throat> not that I have like mafia in my family, but I think in that generation, just everyone, didn't matter where you were, there was a different mentality back then, right? Um, just what you wore, how you presented yourself, what you did, who you said, who you associated with, right? Um, and it reminded me of like my older relatives because I grew up with a lot of them. And it's it's something you don't really see now as much, right? Uh, just how you interact with people, how you treat people. That that meeting, that scene about uh, being late for a meeting, 10 minutes, like you know, more than 10 minutes you're saying something. And yes, I always wear a suit uh, for a meeting. Uh, when Al, um, Al Pacino's character, Jimmy Hoffa, when he says that, that sounded like, like a couple of my... Um, great uncles so not my uncles but like my mother's uncles and stuff like that like you always dressed a certain way right it's, it's like the like the, how some people of an older generation or even like from different countries like they'll dress up to go to the grocery store right just because you're going out it's like that kind of mentality that's what i loved about this film like the, the way the characters interact there's a lot of that old school uh, mentality into it so, but outside of that the the, the mobster story is great um and it really did seem that it's much more of a story of these great actors, them dealing with old age. Cause they've been, they kind of started uh, in this world, creating this world of, of mobs and organized crime, you know, when they were first starting out. So even Scorsese, when he was doing movies, he kind of starts out doing this stuff. The actors are doing this stuff. And like, it's been what, 50 years. Wow. That's crazy almost 50 years since they started. I think it was in the early seventies. And so kind of, I would argue this film is much more of a reflection on that using the kind of story of Jimmy Hoffa and his um, relationship with uh, the mob and uh, Sheeran as a, as a basis to tell that story. So I think that's the second story that they're, they're kind of hinting at there. Um, so I want to start off by sharing, uh, let's see, the first review I saw. Uh, whoops. If I can do it. I have to wait, it won't let me. <laughs> Having a little bit of uh, technical issues here. StreamYard, oh, there we go. All right. Let me make sure you guys can actually see this. There we go. All right, perfect. So the first review comes from Filmmaker Magazine, um, 2019, The Irishman. I don't see the author's name. Oh, there we go. I knew I saw it. Uh, Vadim Rizov. Uh, I hope that's how you said it. And he starts by saying, the opening shot of The Irishman is a signature steady cam glided through a nursing home 
soundtrack by Duop, The Five Saints, 1956, In the Heat of the Night, slowly making its reverential way to an to a close-up of Robert De Niro, a suitably majestic reintroduction of both the actor as persona and his character, hitman Frank Sheeran. And I think he nails it there. It's introducing De Niro, and it's introducing Sheeran. Uh, and I think that's what Scorsese is really getting at with this. The reviewer continues. He begins his reminiscences with memories of a 1975 road trip that would end, hypothetically not confirmed by the FBI, with his killing Jimmy Hoffa, a through line that's returned to while the film flashes back to the post-war beginnings of De Niro's criminal career. So technically that should be Sheeran's criminal career, right? But maybe that's intentional. Because maybe it's also flashing back to De Niro and kind of his first roles in these type of films. Maybe that's intentional. That narrative will inevitably lead up to the Hoffa hit, after which the film takes a mournful march through Sheeran's remaining life very nearly to his grave. So a great setup the reviewer has here for um, The Irishman here. Uh, kind of gives you the real good gist of it. Doesn't go into too much details there is it's a bit spoilery but i mean i don't, I don't think <laughs> i mean history already kind of spoiled at least the majority of this even though the uh hoffa murder isn't solved but the reviewer goes on to say the characters are inevitably less important than the actors performing them joining scorsese's core group of de niro pesci and harvey keitel Al Pacino is both Jimmy Hoffa and inevitably late period Pacino. And that's also what this film was about. This is the first De Niro Pacino film. And Pesci. Uh, don't quote me on that. I think, I don't remember. But definitely the first De Niro Pacino. That's also what this film was about. I think they've all been looking for projects to work together in. And so that's going to bleed into the film itself. Uh, <clears throat> and it's kind of telling that story, right? Uh, in an interesting way of these are these great um, actors and now they're getting to interact with each other to tell the story of um, this hit, but also of their acting career. I enjoyed The Irishman, Irishman, which as has already been noted, is definitely an old man movie, moving at an unhurried pace, but never boring. I disagree with this. I think it, it it's exactly as long as it needs to be. Uh, three hours for a movie is fine by my end. If you're going to watch a movie, watch a movie. Um, granted, some directors don't respect that. Some movies are too long and they don't need to be that long. But this movie specifically, I think it's done really well. I think it sets everything up it needs to set up. And then it, there's a nice good payoff at the end after going through this entire journey. Uh, so. And, and most, and I didn't find many negative reviews, uh, especially from critics, but from like audiences, the biggest complaint was that it's such a long movie. And so I don't, I don't know that, that to me, in my opinion, that's not a, it's not a bad thing if it's done. Um, if, as long as the director is not wasting your time, the killing of Jimmy Hoffa, the peg of the whole project is also supposed to be the kind of betrayal of friendship that makes the whole idea of meaningful personal relationships meaningless. It's something Sheeran tries to stop from happening the whole movie. And it's clear that this superhumanly stoic killer is for once bothered by this potential death, but I had no idea why his relationship with Hoffa throughout is basically that of a subordinate, uh, alternately bemused and exasperated by a needlessly volatile superior, which doesn't seem to translate to higher claims of deeper emotions. As a movie about aging and death made... Oh, wait. Well, before I get into that, I disagree with him here. I think it actually uh, shows you why he actually cares about Hoffa, because there's something very different about Hoffa compared to uh, Sheeran's other people who are mainly mobsters, right? And this is highlighted through his daughter. Um, his daughter, ooh, I forgot her name. It's Anna Packin's character, Peggy. That's right. Um, so Peggy 
pretty much all of Sheeran's buddies who are mobsters, especially Joe Pesci's character, she kind of like shies away from. She doesn't want to be around. And it's kind of like, have you ever had that person, that relative that's just, I don't know, that wants to be a good relative, but it's something's off about them. And so, you know, the the kid can kind of tell that like, you know, he's a mobster and stuff like that. She doesn't want to really be next to him, even as a very young girl. Like he's trying to be nice just because, you know, Sheeran's like uh, one of his, one of his best, uh, I guess, Lieutenant or whatever the structure was. Uh, so he's trying to be nice to the, to the girl, but she could just tell she just gets a bad vibe from him and she's just like super shy around him. But with uh, Jimmy Hoffa, she sees the exact opposite in him, right? He's not like these mobsters. And so she really like, um, we, she really treats him like an uncle, like a really close uncle or something like that. Right. Like almost like a, a almost a second dad kind of, cause she, she has a very distant relationship with her, with her father, uh, Sheeran. And so I think that's what Sheeran sees in Hoffa. I think that's why he has that close relationship with him. And that's why it's hard to kill this guy. Right, because he's not like these other mobsters or anyone else in this world or anything like that. Right, he might be stubborn, he might be a bit of a narcissist, he might be doing all these different things. Right, but he truly believes in what he's doing. He's truly, I don't know, he's just different. He's different from the other group. That's what I got from the film watching him, and I think that's what kind of makes this so tough for Sheeran um, to do this whole thing. And so I kind of just agree with that. I think, I think it does show, I think the movie through the character of Peggy, Sheeran's daughter, you see why it's hard for him to kill Hoffa and why, what that friendship was as a movie about aging and death made by a director and core collaborators who have aged into the present. Since... So that's what I was getting at earlier. I would say it's much more about that. It's much more, more about Scorsese and the actors he's worked with and their journey since 73. That's what this movie's really about. And I think the story of Jimmy Hoffa <laughs> in a weird way is plays second fiddle to that. We're watching characters decay over five decades, though many don't live long enough to have that option in just under three and a half hours. And I don't know who wouldn't be moved by that. And it's not just the characters they're portraying, but it's the actors as well. Um, because if you're like my age or older, I mean, you've pretty much grown up with all these people, right? Um, and so seeing them and, and, it, and it's coming to this and it's coming, I don't know. I think I really do think that's what this film is really about. Um, so I enjoy this. I think most most of the reviews are positive like this. What I like about him is he's, he's kind of hinting more at the fact that this is more than just a, um, a half a film. Right. Like there's, this is more than that. There's a second story being told that has nothing to do with any of that. And it's based on the actors and, and directors for better or worse. And like I said, because this was a hard film, I mean, not a hard film, just because this is a beloved film, like a ton of, especially by critics. Um, it was hard to find negative reviews, but I did find one um, review from the world socialist website. Uh by Kevin Martinez and David Walsh. I will preface this. They were not too fond, which uh, isn't surprising. I've never met a happy socialist. Um, but And it's a very long and in-depth review. I'm not going to hit everything. I, I, I do think it's worth, I'm just going to spoil it. I think it's worth seeing. I disagree with a lot. But I'm glad they're giving a very critical eye and critical lens into this because there's some really good points that are brought up that I'm like, man, yeah, that's, I don't know. That that kind of gets beyond the message of um, the Hoffa murders, the Hoffa murder, and kind of touches more about mob films in general. So this review uh, starts off shortly before his death in, two, in 2003. Sheeran told author Charles Brandt that he had killed his former boss and longtime friend Jimmy Hoffa, the, team, the Teamsters president from 1957 to 1971, who disappeared in 1975. Sheeran's claims have been strenuously and convincingly contested by various sources. Uh, Brandt's book is I Heard You Paint Houses, Frank the Irishman, Sheeran, and the Closing of the Case of Jimmy Hoffa, 2004. 
costing nearly $160 million and with a running time of 209 minutes, The Irishman is Scorsese's longest and most expensive film. <clears throat> Good introduction. I'm glad it gives you that background into it. And I'm glad it, it, it stresses that we don't know if this actually happened. It's a good story. We don't really have proof. It hasn't really been verified by anyone other than the uh, by Sheeran himself, right, who confessed this. The reviewers go on to say, the film has received universal praise from critics. Innumerable publications have pronounced it epic or a masterpiece or both. The New York Times' A.O. Scott argues that Scorsese's work is long and dark. Long like a novel by Dostoevsky or Dreiser. Dark like a painting by Rembrandt. The critic who differs sharply with these views is very much fighting against the stream. That's true. Like I said, I mainly saw positive reviews from critics, right? It was very, very hard. Not hard, but the negative reviews were few and far in between. The Irishman is a poor, shallow, trite work which goes back over territory Scorsese has covered numerous times. It continues and even deepens an unhealthy and tedious obsession with the representation of mob figures as somehow holding the key to understanding modern American life. The fact that the filmmaker goes to such great lengths to make figures who coldly kill for money and power into essentially sympathetic or compelling characters is hardly to his artistic or intellectual credit. Nor is it to the credit, credit of the critics who succumb to the same attraction. More importantly, this speaks to the general cultural and political stagnation of the past several decades. So that <laughs> is a lot to unpack. But I think it is a very, very good point. <clears throat> there is this weird idolization of like mobsters and stuff like that. And I get it. Like I, I love those films and stuff like that. But I wouldn't actually want to live in that, right? Like growing up, there were gangs where I lived. And going through that sucked. Like that was not a really good time right so imagine like actual like real organized crime there is this weird fascination to to glamorize it and to, and it is really weird to make sheeran a sympathetic character because as you'll see like he's killed plenty of people in cold blood and he doesn't care hoffa is the only one he does care right he feels remorseful and bad about right so it's like I don't know. That is that is very, like I hadn't thought of that, but it is a, it is an odd thing, right? Because it's not it's like the people who are getting whacked or something like that. They're just off screen, like you don't really think about them, right? But then when you do, you're like, yeah, this is I don't know. Is I don't know. It makes you think, like what it what what is the real message here, right? But the reviewers continue. It is one of Scorsese's. Uh, misfortunes that he was long ago to a certain extent by default proclaimed the greatest living American filmmaker. <clears throat> there appears to be no one in or around the circles in which Corsese travels who offers serious criticism or an objective appraisal of his film work. This is probably true, um, but that doesn't mean he's not a good filmmaker. But I understand where they're coming from, right? I think when you get to a certain level, or when you've been at a certain level for a long time, very few people are going to be criticizing you in your own circles, right? I'm sure he sees negative things all the time about his films. But it's hard to take that seriously when, like, <clears throat> major publications or major people who have a lot of weight are also part of that circle or consider you that, right? So I understand where that's coming, and I'm glad they make that. It's, it's always good to keep that in mind, especially when we think of, like, the – because I do think he's a great director. Um, but it is good to keep that in mind. Ooh, I'm not used to uh, talking out loud for so much. But the reviewers continue. 
The filmmakers have divorced the Irishman from a serious assessment of Hoffa's role, the broader evolution of the American labor movement, and conditions of life in the U.S. in the mid-20th century. Instead, Scorsese and screenwriter Steve uh, Zalian offer their audience a rambling, highly repetitive, at times incoherent drama, which presumably depends for its success with critics on a number of extended set pieces involving De Niro, Al Pacino as Hoffa, and various other performers doing their best impressions of tough guys. Reality and history don't figure largely here. This is true. I agree with him, but I don't see this as a negative. Um, it's clear the authors wanted something uh, deeper or something much more focused on Jimmy Hoffa or, you know, the role clearly of the, of the United States and the labor movement and stuff like that. But I think that's why this film is specifically called the Irishman, the Irishman. It's not called Jimmy Hoffa, right? It's not called um, Teamsters or Teamsters Union. It's about Frank Sheeran and his claim that he's the one who killed Hoffa. That's what this is about. And so I think <clears throat> I agree with him, but I think they're wrong in, in having this assessment. I mean, the title itself tells you what this is about, what their goal is. And so I don't think there's any rug pulling or I don't think you should have expected something more that the perspective is always going to be from uh, Frank Sheeran, uh, because that's what the movie is about. It's about what it's about his claim. And if it's true, you know, the movie signet it as true, like this is what happened why why that happened right so frank got into this because he's i mean in the movie you find out he got into it because he's there to keep an eye on jimmy hoffa right because the mob is involved with hoffa and he's kind of the person the in-between between between hoffa and the mob to keep an eye on him and so that's what that's what the focus is going to be on the film and so i think you have to keep that in mind like the film scorsese or the screenwriters never called this hoffa or something like that right if that was the case then this would be a very strong point in their review. But I think it's it's not. It's clearly not the case, so I would disagree with them here. Goes into a lot of details um, about the film, so that's why I really like this review. It's a very extensive review, and the, the not, it's not just about the film. Uh, the reviewers give you really good background on what's happening during these time periods, right? During the Kennedy investigation and stuff like that into Hoffa why he was investigated. Um, but then it goes back into the film. More significantly, Scorsese has never been drawn to presenting actual history. He has a sight set on higher things, uh, myth um, mythicized history, the working out under varied circumstances of his particular and unchanging concerns. Guilt as redemption, human evil or human evil criminality male friendships loyalty and betrayal etc the director has done little to add to the public's knowledge about jimmy hoffa or the degeneration of the american labor movement pacino's performance is a collection of physical and vocal mannerisms apparently uninformed by any study of the teamsters leaders history or the meaning of his career so I already touched on this previously, right? <clears throat> Scorsese wasn't, that wasn't the intent of this film. The intent of this film was to tell the story of uh, Frank Sheeran and his perspective of why he killed Jimmy Hoffa. That's number one. But number two, he's right here. That Scorsese is focusing on more of a, uh, a myth history. I would say he's, if, you, if you're familiar with Herodotus, one of the, they call him the grandfather of history. He, the way they would tell history back then is much more of a story, which is where it comes from, right? And I would argue like that myth story, that myth story actually has more value than giving dates. This happened, this happened, this happened, this happened. Because humans learn and pass on knowledge via stories, not by dates. This is why people, this is why a ton of people hate history because it's taught the wrong way. The way they teach history now, it's like, all right, this state happened, this state happened, this state happened, and then this, this, this. First off, all those points that they gave you, a lot of them are contested, right, when it comes to history. Second, that's not how people work. P 
people do things for a variety of things, right? Like people, like, I think a good example, if you ever read the Greek myths, like their gods are a good example of how people are. They're impulsive. They do things for, for random things. They take, some people take loyalty seriously. Some people don't. Some people take agreements. They do this, they do that. And it's like, these things happen for a variety of different reasons. I don't think it's very hard and very boring to give a quote unquote objective history. Cause even that would be um, questionable, right? Cause if I were to say, um, all right, uh, the Vietnam war, even that, I mean, was it a war? People call it a conflict. It wasn't really a war historically speaking, but some people say it was a war. And so did America lose in that war? Some people will be like, yes, of course they lost. You know, that's where the troops came back. Some people, well, no, they didn't lose because we didn't send all the troops there. And then all these different things, no one's going to remember that. But if you have like a mythic story of that event, that's more likely to get passed down. And so it's a little bit of a tangent, but that's one of the things I've always, because I love history, but I think it's taught incorrectly. And I think people miss the point. I would argue someone like Herodotus or someone like a Scorsese making this kind of film um, touches more on what history should be. Um, it's not necessarily about objective facts because even that, it's how many of those actually exist? How many objective objective facts in history of, uh, exist? But I'm getting into a tangent. I just I disagreed with him there. Uh, with that, it's a good point to bring up, but I just I think it's just two very different views on what um, history should be here. But then they they go on um, murderers and psychopaths in many cases, some of whose actions have more than a hint of medieval savagery about them, the foulest and most backward members of society. They are given far more depth and pathos than they possibly deserve. This when I read this, I was like. I don't know how to feel about this. I don't, I don't know what I think about this. I do agree. Like part of me really does agree. It's like, do they really deserve to be <clears throat> portrayed in this way? Right. Like, cause think about all the tyrants in the past that are, that are portrayed. I don't know, in a much better light or in a more sympathetic light now because we're removed from that existence. But then again, they're also human beings, right? Like, it's not like I, there's no such thing as someone who's pure evil. I don't care what anyone says. People can do really disgusting and evil things, sure. And I think anyone's capable of doing really evil things, just like anyone's capable of doing really good things. Um, I did like it. I, uh, I like that because it really made me stop and think. It's like, as, as a filmmaker, as someone, presenting something on screen, what responsibility do you have, right? Especially when you're talking about real people that actually existed um, in portraying them a certain way, right? And especially when you're talking about like mobsters, because there really is this like, I don't know, this almost not putting them on a pedestal, but they're like part of folklore, right? Like cowboys, right? Um, and is that good? I don't know. I, I, it's, I, I don't know. That is a really good, I think, thinker that this is why I like this review because I think it's definitely something to highlight. Um, <clears throat> I like, I think all stories should be told even murderous ones and stuff like that, but it does make you think like, what is that impact that you're doing there? But then what also happens if you only show them as savage, right? Like if you completely dehumanize them and show them as like, oh, no, 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 they were just robotic killers, right? That's all they did. They were not human at all. There's also a danger there with that too. So I don't think you can go really far one way or the other. Um, but yeah, you definitely shouldn't say like, if, if you're talking about a hitman, I mean, this guy's killing people. He's literally hired to kill people and he's fine with that. It's not like he's forced to do this. So it's a good point. It's a good, that's why I like this um, review, even though I disagree with a lot of it. I disagree with a lot of what they're, what they're saying, just like the second paragraph. But what about the Teamster members themselves? The only scenes in which they are included are ones where Hoffa addresses meetings of drivers, assuming that some of the audience members are drivers and not union officials who applaud and cheer him on like mindless automatons. No truck driver is singled out for dramatic treatment, only gangsters. They miss the point. That's why it's called The Irishman. It's from Frank Sheeran's perspective. He would have this perspective where he didn't really associate, you know, with them. He was the he was the in-between. He did work with some of the locals and stuff like, like the the um, 
local unions, but it's from his perspective and it's from the killing of Hoffa. So why would he highlight the Teamsters if that if that's not really the core of the movie? So like it's these things that make it a little bit more unfounded. Um, and I think that was the main thing there. But I, like I said, I disagree with a lot of this on this review, but it's a very well-written review. And I think it's if you like The Irishman, it's definitely worth – and if you like films, it's worth looking at this review because it highlights a lot of things um, that you might not necessarily think about, that you might take for granted. The role of having these sympathetic but also – borderline i mean they are villainous characters as the mainstay of your films and they're they are anti-heroes but they're not right um it also like the fact that they were willing to criticize scorsese i mean that's when someone reaches a certain level i mean it's very like you do find less and less and less criticism and i think in the long run as long as it's done <clears throat> without malicious intent and i don't think they're intending any malicious intent i think that is a very good healthy thing to do. So I, I did enjoy that review. Like I said, I'm, I still love the Irishman. I think it's a very well-made, well-written, well-acted film that took as long as it needed to. And it was telling a very specific story. It wasn't telling the story of Jimmy Hoffa. It was telling the story of the man who supposedly killed him or allegedly killed him. And I think that, and it frames it right from the title. And so Given that the case, you know, I highly recommend it. I highly recommend that review, but I highly recommend the film, uh, The Irishman. And I think uh, if you have Netflix, definitely check it out. Don't be scared by the t uh, by the runtime itself. Mm -hmm.